We're live now? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> the kids are laughing at me. <clears throat> and can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is there anybody on there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, hey everybody, this is Candy Mossett with the Indigenous Environmental Network, and I am standing in North Dakota here today where we're in Williston right now. Um, I'm standing in front of a man camp, which is behind me. And we've been driving around the Fort Berthold Reservation, where I'm from, Mandan, Hiradzo, Rikara Nations, and then around the basically the heart of the Bakken Shale oil boom, talking about the pipelines, the various pipelines and cooling Dakota access, talking about the man camps, about the infrastructure, with our guests and visitors that we brought um, to kind of share some of the information. So I wanted you guys to hear from some of the folks. So they're going to introduce themselves, tell you where they're from, and how this is connected or what they feel kind of about what we've been seeing on this toxic tour of the Bakken here in North Dakota so far. <clears throat> Good afternoon, I'm uh, Pastor Joseph from uh, Mount Tryon Baptist Church in St. James, Louisiana. I'm here visiting North Dakota, come to see what North Dakota looked like and we have been on a tour. And what I'm seeing, I see St. James because they're doing the same thing here, destroying people, destroying lives, destroying the water. And this is what I'm seeing, and uh, uh, this is the stuff that I see that we're destroying people and livelihood, and it's not a great sight to see. And we're still talking about the pipeline that is coming through, but I don't see where the pipeline is really going to go because they got enough oil here already, and the oil that they're going to be shipping, it will be coming to Louisiana and our home state, and our little community will be where they will stop this oil. And this is why we're fighting because we don't need no more in our area. And we got people in our area already that are sick. And since he being here talking to Candace, it's the same thing going on in North Dakota. People are sick with cancer. Children are sick with our asthma and all that stuff. So that's the same thing we're dealing with. And we're just hoping and praying that God hear our prayers and that God answer us that some of this stuff can stop and stop looking at money and start looking at human beings. Hello, I'm Eve Butler. From Sage James, Louisiana and I'm part of the HELP, 5th District HELP Association. And coming up here to North Dakota, I wasn't quite sure what I would see. I did expect to see some industry, but not as much as I have. And it's just been amazing to me how many flares are burning and how low they are to the ground. But up here, the people are fighting to purify their land, whereas where I'm from, uh, our fight is gonna be, you know, to buy us out. Because looking at this environment, and what the companies are, not all companies, but some companies are capable of, where we're at, I don't think our environment can be saved or restored. And I just have a lot of support and sympathy for the people up here. Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Jesus Hoguin from, from Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and just some of the things, oh, oh, so I work with the Environmental Justice League of Rhode Island. Um, but some of the things that I have found surprising or just been shocked to see is the amount of things that are on top of one another, just looking, driving driving by or just like watching, we see cattle on, on top of um, farmland and within that farmland is also like oil rigs right next to them, um, cows drinking from like water that has been contaminated um, and it just shocks me to see those things but I think some of the biggest um, things that I get out of being here or like this experience is just watching, seeing the connections between what our local struggle in Providence and us fighting liquefied natural gas um, and the way it connects to what's going on here and how things are being extracted here and also being put into, um, being extracted from like indigenous communities and then being put into communities where it's like black and brown folks um, that are being affected by like proposed plants and stuff. Um, yeah, and I think sucks. I don't know where else to go. Anybody else to take this? Thank you. Hi, y'all. Um, Farhad Ibrahimi from the Chorus Foundation. Um, and something that I've been thinking a lot about today and I think about a lot about in general is there's so much complexity in terms of what's happening here. This isn't just an environmental issue. It's an issue of indigenous sovereignty. It's an issue of violence against women. It's an issue of community self-determination, as well as like environmental health, biodiversity, all those kinds of things. And just thinking about how can we get my peers in philanthropy 
to view it through a complex lens where we're actually letting people on the ground make the decisions that they need to make in terms of how to approach the issue, which organizing strategies make sense, uh, which issues to emphasize, et cetera, because um, as I'm sure a lot of my friends here um, have experienced and that I've certainly seen among my peers is like most of the funding is just siloed to this is just for your work on this or that or the other thing and it totally ignores the interconnections between them. Um, and the very important work that we see happening in, in places like North Dakota, other parts of the country, including where folks uh, here are from, it's complex work and it, and it has to be driven by the strategic decisions that folks on the ground know that they need to make and funding constraints, constrained funding, short-term funding, all of that is one of the biggest obstacles to their work. Um, and so I've been thinking a lot about how do we get other folks in philanthropy to understand the kinds of things that folks on the ground know through experience in their work and how do we get them to shift the way those funding streams work so that this work can really be supported in the, in the fullest possible way. I'm going to hand this off. Hi, uh, I'm Sheree Foytlin. I live in Rain, Louisiana, and I work with a group called Bold Louisiana. And what we do is we help empower people to self-determine their own way, hopefully away from the fossil fuel industry um, in particular. And we're fighting the Bayou Bridge Pipeline, which is basically the product that's made here. Well, it would, if that pipeline's going, would end up in that, in that pipeline. And then over to St. James, which is the community that you just met earlier. So... Um, what I what am I seeing? I'm seeing I'm seeing violence. I mean I don't have another word for it, and I feel like um, I feel like we're in this like kind of moral moment uh, all over the world, not just here in America, where we have to make some hard decisions about who we're going to be and what we're going to be, and we have to stop this foolish line of that we either have to um, destroy our planet or live in the Stone Age. It's, it's just silly. It's silly, and and we have to invest. Uh, in in solutions and in a future that actually works for all of us and saves something for our kids, right? And I think that you know we have one of the best governments that money could buy <laughs> right now. And I think that you know a lot of people times I hear people say, oh, this is a pushback, you know, from from the Obama era, and and that may be true. But I also think that it's a pushback from the great work that we've been seeing all over all over the country and all over the world. Like this is comes back where where. Uh, there's, as far as I'm concerned, it's evil, you know, coming after good people and in particular strong women that are standing up and trying to protect their communities. You know, just yesterday we had a situation where this actor, uh, they, they talk about so-called paid protesters, and this actor had this whole page devoted to just, you know, being ugly and then come to find out that that same actor was, was doing the same thing, putting out videos uh, by a different name in a whole other state, you know. And whether he was even in those states, we don't know. But that's the length that uh, this industry will go to to subvert um, the goodness and, and the protection of our, our future generations because to them it's all about money you know and I think we have to get really real about that and I think we have to be be respectful to the past and to the people who have been organizing for all of these years but we also have to go at it a new way because you know what we're doing it to some degree has not been working and I think we have to work on the ground level and build and build towards solutions and empower our children because they're going to take over for us it's, it's going to go past our lifetime and and uh, and really arm the struggle with what it needs in order to win this battle that potentially, no, that in every way will save the planet and save future generations. There's no more there's no more ways around it. And we have to stand up and be strong and be smart and work together and use the power that we have together, right? And empower those people that think that for some reason they don't have that power because they do, they do. You know, we just have to decide what way we want to go and we have to dig deep and be smart and 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 have the have the backs of the generations in front of us and stand in front of the ancestors that are behind us and use that power and move forward and create a better way and we can do that we can we can't listen to those naysayers we have to put them down and put them behind us right they're just wrong right be strong uh. 
So uh, my name is Jaron Brown, and I'm with Grassroots Global Justice Alliance. And um, it's a real honor to be uh, here, especially um, right, you know, thinking about where, where the significance of women's leadership. So I think in terms of our work with, with Indigenous Environmental Network and, and the folks here in Fort Berthold, we, we've been talking a lot about grassroots feminism. And I think this struggle, you know, especially highlights that, that in, you know, the, the intensity of 2011 and 2012 and the crisis that nationwide we were hearing about violence against women and girls as these man camps were coming in, that that, uh, it was totally tied to the extractive industry um, but it was really women's leadership that pushed that forward to say, you know, uh, not only are we not going to allow the, the toxic violence happening uh, to the land, to our communities, but also um, the tremendous, it was 168%, I think I learned today, spike in violence specifically tied to the oil industry. Uh, so we're uh, really committed to building a movement for just transition that's not only about transitioning against the extractive industries, but also about fundamentally healing and bringing in uh, resources around around addiction, resources around violence, fundamentally changing the way we relate to each other, the way we relate to the earth. Um, and that's what I'm seeing here in Fort Berthold and the movement that's coming up in the indigenous leadership in this community that's standing up against some of the most powerful oil and, uh, companies in the world and saying we actually can do something different and we won't allow the future of this community to be tied to such a toxic, um, to to such a toxic economy and such a toxic way of being. So um, it's about challenging capitalism. It's about changing the way we relate to the earth. Um, and fundamentally, I think this is the kind of movement that can change that. Um, so it's beautiful. We're just a few miles away from Standing Rock, um, where that that uh, that is all a part of the resistance here. So it's been a really um, beautiful way to set some context to the struggle. Hi, I'm Catherine Hilton. Uh, I've been living in North Dakota for a little over three years now. Uh, I work for no one, but I will work with anyone. <laughs> uh -huh. um, and really what today is the message I would like to carry forth is that the decimation that folks in North Dakota are feeling as a result of the oil industry and even the coal industry that has been in this state for so long, as rural as it is, is not going to be changed without community transformations across this country and in reality across this world. So I would encourage all of you to just continue going forth in your own communities and living the changes that we need to be able to survive and perhaps carry forward the messages that Cherie shared with you and the other visitors have today as well. Oh, Candy. Candy. Okay. Um, I had a little message here real quick. I want to ask the kids here. Hey kids, um, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think about, you know, what you're seeing in the fracking? Ben fracking waters life. Aww. See, they're so cute. They're creative. They came up with these things. Thank you. And uh, Pastor, did you want to say something again? Mm -hmm. You want to? Yeah, again, we're going to be um, praying for Nordic. Introduce yourself again. All Pastor. right. <laughs> All right, again, this is me, Pastor Joseph uh, from Mount Triumph Baptist Church in St. James, Louisiana. And we are, like I said, we're in North Dakota, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that I'm seeing that I thought I wouldn't have seen, but I come and I see the same thing that we're going through. And uh, I just pray my prayers that uh, God will answer our prayers and God will hear us, and most of all, that God give us favor. Because uh, I got my theories of saying things that the Bible declared the love of money is the root of all evil. And we have seen this through the pipeline, through the gas company, oil company, that they love the money. But the root of evil is that they're destroying people for money, and God is not pleased with that. And I don't think God is pleased with the way that they're destroying our lives. So I hope and I pray that our governors in this state, our governors in our state, can understand what people want. All people want is life. And as we know, our bodies is 90% water. Water is life. And I'm hoping and praying that people can come to the knowledge that we need water, we need our food, and we need everything that we need to live. And I hope and pray. And I'm going to ask everyone to come right now, and we're just going to gather around me. We're just going to have a little short prayer. So everybody come on over. And to give some context, again, just 
Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this video. We're going to be doing a water blessing and healing walk tomorrow morning at Four Bears Park at the marina in Newtown, um, which is their third annual. It's bringing together the tribes to be able to bless the water and pray for the water. And then we do a healing walk as a result of what we've been dealing with for over a decade now in North Dakota in our communities. This is it. This is the Bakken Shell, the extraction zone ripping it out, tearing up the earth for things like the Dakota Access Pipeline and all the other pipelines. Our message is stop it at the source. Stop raping and pillaging at the source and then causing all these other problems all the way down the line from the pipelines, the trucks, the trains, the train bombs, to the end line where communities are already impacted. We're all in this fight together talking about water. You know, They use millions of gallons for every frack job and it has to stop. So, I think you wanted to do, we're going to do a little part, do you want us to stream this? We'll probably go now. <laughs> but again, thank you so much to our listeners, people, share this out. And, um, you know, we're going to be doing this again next year. Hopefully you can join us if you want to see the Bakken Shale oil, where this oil is coming from. Next week, the PSC, the Public Service Commission of North Dakota, is going to court against the Dakota Access Pipeline for four violations that they had building the construction. The pipeline starts up here in Williston, if people didn't know, and goes and cuts down across several counties through our state. It's already leaked three times. Again, stopping it at the source is what we're talking about and protecting water. So, Matsuki Dads, and why don't we just all say it? Water is life? Yeah. All right. One, two, three. Water is life! Wave bye! Bye! Bye, y'all.